Hey folks, Darren with Fervent Astronomy. Today looking at this, the Sigma 15mm f2.8 EX fisheye lens. And this is a DSLR era lens. It's that gold EX lens series from Sigma. Uh, and it's available for pretty much every mount under the sun. And what is there to say about this lens? Well, it's a 180 degree fisheye. And that can be useful for some types of astrophotography, especially considering it's a fast-ish aperture of f2.8. But on the outside, there's actually two versions of this lens. This is the second design, I suppose. It's got kind of a satin finish to it. Uh, there's another one that has a little bit more of a gloss finish to it, a slightly older one. And sometimes some of these Sigma finishes can be known to break down. So uh, get a little gummy, so be aware of that if you're going to pick up one of these used. That being said, this predates things like gaskets on the bayonet, but it does come with a interesting hood slash lens cap, so we've got a normal lens cap, and then a hood that just presses on, and it's just a circle. You can make cookies with this, probably. And underneath here is a built-in metal hood uh, surrounding this front element. I have gone through the trouble of dissecting one of these and removing the hood. To remove the hood from this lens requires a complete teardown of the lens because underneath the focusing ring it is bolted to the main housing inside. So keep that in mind if you're the type that wants to remove this. And it's not plastic, you can't just come at it with a an exacto knife if you want to try and make a circular fisheye. That being said, you can't really make a circular fish out of that, but I'll get to that in a second. Manual focus ring, of course, manually coupled, and on this particular lens, there's not a, a focusing switch, depending on what brand of camera it might come with an AF MF switch. So I mentioned circular fisheye. This is not a circular fisheye, and you can get it close, but not quite there if you use a focal reducer. So I did some experiments where I used a focal reducer, otherwise known as a speed booster, which takes that full frame image circle and projects it into an APS-C-ish sized image circle for a mirrorless camera. And that compresses it, but also speeds the lens up. And what I found after removing the hood and everything, is you don't quite get full circular. You'll cut the top and bottom off, but you get closer. So that could be a very viable choice if you are the type that finds one for cheap and you want to tinker around. Anyway, let's look at the samples and uh, see how this lens performs. Spoilers, it's probably not going to be completely clean across the frame, but who knows. Hey folks, welcome to Lightroom. Today we're looking at the Sigma 15mm f2.8 EX fisheye, that old venerable fisheye. Uh, in this case, for pretty much any DSLR mount, and it can be adapted to pretty much any mirrorless mount. I have a couple samples here. We've got some, a few tracked samples. We've got a couple static samples. This lens, f2.8, it's pretty slow, but we'll see what we got. So the tracked samples here are done with the Fornax Mount Flight Track 2. Fervent Astronomy is Fornax's distributor in North America. If you're curious about the Light Track 2, want to learn more, head over to ferventastronomy.com. In this case, I opted for more of the tracked samples just because of how slow the lens is. And uh, yeah, we'll give it a go. Here, the a7R5, 60 megapixels, 60 second exposures, ISO 320. If you're curious about why I'm using this ISO, it's something called ISO invariance. Check the link in the description. There will be an article at the end of that uh, on my website that will help you understand why I'm doing it. But just know that by shooting at ISO 320 with this particular camera, I get the same results as I would shooting at ISO 3200, but with the ability to recover more highlights than I would. Uh, otherwise, noise performance, shadows, everything else, basically identical. And if that doesn't make sense, well, go read that article. Also, at the end of that link to, to fervenastronomy.com, you will uh, get a link to these samples. And by all means, download them, process them, take a look at what I'm sure are going to be not very good corners and stuff. Have at her. Just please respect my copyright. I did put in the work. By all means, use these photos for your own personal assessment of the lens's abilities, but don't distribute them online or otherwise. Please don't misrepresent them as your own. Please don't use them as the basis for your own reviews, etc., etc. Please use the samples in good faith for the purpose for which I'm providing them. 
That being said, we'll just really quickly look at this untracked 15 second exposure with the Alpha 1. Come into the center, it's dark as heck. <laughs> Come to the edges, you can see a little bit of astigmatism, we'll talk about this later. No, this is not coma, we'll talk about it in a minute. But it is there, uh, but it's super dark, right? This lens, you're going to have to leave open for quite a while to get any kind of decent exposure. So let's do that. Let's pop into this image, which is 60 seconds tracked. So the stars should be in the same place. And here we see that there are no trails, so we're doing pretty good. First things first, it's so dark here, I can't see anything. We're just going to boost the exposure a little bit. A couple of things to note with a fisheye, the 180 degree fisheye lens, vignetting. It's going to be weird because it'll vignette at the ground, kind of. And in this case, I, I can't say one way or the other whether or not there's any vignetting to worry about. I'm going to say probably a little bit. You know, the, the lens does have uh, pedal hood built in, but I can't imagine that it's going to be a big issue, especially considering everything else we're going to deal with with a fisheye lens. The contrast, I don't know that the contrast across the frame is a huge issue. It looks, looks pretty well the same all around. Again, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So there is some chromatic aberration. If we jump here into the middle, we see that this star here has got some purple fringing. Chromatic aberration, but it's not too bad. And, you know, it's, it's a fisheye lens. We're not really caring about spherical distortions, but I don't see any egregious star bloat. I don't think that's a, a concern. Look at Galaxy. Let's go back here to the corners and look at this astigmatism. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty. That is pretty. So these space moths or birds or whatever, this is astigmatism, not coma. What am I talking about? Well, astigmatism is a manifestation where a pinpoint of light is not getting focused into a pinpoint. So you have two types, tangential, which will be along an axis from the center to the edges and corners of the frame. You'll also have sagittal, which will act to kind of ring the frame, so to speak. It'll be at a, a right angle to the tangential. So when we zoom in here, this is tangential and this is sagittal astigmatism. So the wings are sagittal astigmatism and this body of whatever you want to consider this shape is tangential. Sometimes as you stop down this rectified, but we're at f2.8, we don't have a really a ton of place to go. That being said, I mean it's not too bad. The various rainbow of Chromatic aberration is interesting. Now, there's not to my eye any coma. Coma is something completely different. Coma would be if you have a star and you get it, these deltas or wedge shapes where you get like a fuzzy tail uh, with all the tails either pointing towards the middle of the frame or the edges of the frame. That's coma. I'm not seeing that happening here. Uh, I mean, the astigmatism, the astigmatism makes it a little bit tough to to tell if things are in focus here in the same amount as here, but a fisheye lens is not typically a lens you worry about field curvature, and I don't think we're going to worry about it. I think things are about as in focus here as they could be compared with the center of the frame, given the fact that they look like this. Distortions with one of these lenses is, is going to be like the big thing, right? But first, let's just let's take a little flip through some of these images. So if we look here, and I apologize, there's going to be a bit of a frame shift. From 2.8 to 3.2, while the astigmatism changes color slightly, we're not really gaining much. And as we stop down, we see we're really sacrificing our exposure, and we don't really want to do that. If we look in the corner, 2.8, 3.2, 3.5, f4, you can't stop down the astigmatism away. Let's pop into our develop window here, remove chromatic aberration. Oh, how surprising it didn't work. So we'll try and defringe these manually. That worked a little bit. Oop. Looks like you got to make a choice, green or purple. Ultimately, that worked pretty well. Now we've just got a bunch of monochrome or at least evenly colored shapes, but it's a fisheye lens. It is what it is. Now, if we enable the profile correction, we're going to lose our 180 degrees and it's going to make an attempt to flatten the frame. Now, that being said, you can see here that things are getting stretched like crazy. If we zoom out the transformation, can't even zoom out all the way. We're losing a lot of the frame and what's left in the corners is going to be super stretched out. You can see that. So uh, do you want to do that? I'm going to leave it up to you. At this point, you're better off kind of shooting with a 12 millimeter 2.8 Lawa lens, I would imagine. 
especially considering how smushy and, and stretched out the corners and, and whatnot look. That's up to you. In this case, we get a pretty even field across. It's not the most amazing lens ever, but it is a very unique look, a unique lens. And this is the type of situation where you might find yourself using it. I'm going to take the profile corrections away from this one. So we can see this was Aurora a little while ago. Got a lot of cool color and stuff. Profile corrections really stretch it out. In this type of situation, you might be able to get away with this, although you can see things are getting pretty blotchy here. Overall, this is going to be one of those personal things. This is one frame of a time lapse, so there's a pretty decent chance that as this is moving, people aren't going to notice the blotchiness so much, so it might not be a bad move, but you have to decide for yourself what you're willing to, to gain or, or lose here in this type of situation. So it is a fisheye lens. Defishing a fisheye lens, like I said, you might be better off not shooting a fisheye lens. That's that. Let's go pop out and uh, finish this thing up. All right. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I mean, this lens was never going to be amazing, but it could be uh, a useful thing for a very specific type of person. And if you're that type of person, you now know. So I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, yeah, fisheye lenses. Bring fisheye lenses back. We will. Actually, they're already back, so never mind. But I'm Darren. This is Fervent Astronomy. Thanks so much, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.